Hello, how's it going? So the Teletubbies went down pretty well at the Ramsgate Festival of Sound. Um, people enjoyed it. Uh, apparently, yeah, people came, look, some people came looking a bit sad and then left with a smile on the face. And that's, in the end of the day, sort of, uh, you know, what it was built for. Uh, hopefully, before this weekend, because uh, the museum's open this weekend, the tickets are available below if you're interested in coming. Well, I'm gonna try and get these wired in going down the corridor before uh, before this weekend. So it's open and, you know, the Teletubbies are now uh, gonna still be usable and stuff. The one thing I noticed about them being outside was the wind took the sound away. They weren't as audible. Uh, down the corridor, I think it's gonna be quite good because they're gonna go down and then back on themselves. Uh, the corridor is pretty uh, plain at the minute, but these will kind of set it off. They're actually gonna be bolted facing down like this from above. Um, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's not what this video is about. This video is about a couple of electronic sets that turned up in the last couple of weeks. Thank you very much to Giles and Scarlett and also Scott and Sid, who uh, both uh, brought in a couple of really interesting experimenter sets that, you know, aren't here. So this should slowly kind of take it over because they're just interesting, the amount of variation within these kind of uh, kits and stuff. Uh, this kind of stuff, all of these uh, stuff will find new homes. Uh, I'm currently working on on another room uh, so it's gonna get bigger soon but that's I don't know how long that's gonna take however yeah the electronic sets but anyway let's have a look at these two educator boards because they're noticeably different to any of the others which is interesting they're just such a vast array of these things anyway uh, take it away old video sorry 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 <laughs> let's, let's open it aha very cool so inside we've got well there's um, a world of radio electronics trees of knowledge this is awfully interesting because um yeah we haven't got this one here in the display of all of the educational setups let's have a little uh, little look at what's going on uh, by the way this these are from scott and Sid, and um, they've been clearing out for a while um, at Scott's mother's house, and there's a there's a treasure trove of interesting things. And this is pretty cool. It's an educational set that I must say I have not seen before, but it seems to have um, buttons, so you can potentially be able to use it as a keyboard. However, this thing looks like it's been, had a lot of lot of love. It's been used quite a bit, but if you could see, there's connections on the back, and then connects up to the screws, and then the two sides are connected through this. Couple of potentiometers, it looks like. Yeah, a couple of really old school potentiometers on the back. It's been modified a little bit, but it's enough to show the example of the educational item. What's the integrated circuit we have here? We have UA741CP. Have you got this? Have you ever seen this specific world of radio electronics before? 200 experiments. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, book, shall we? This is a cross off of the experiments of what has been done. So this thing has got a lot of use. So I suspect this is what Scott used when he was younger. It has been used an awful lot. So here, this is how you outline how you have to build it. It comes in, um, so lighting and LED, that's a nice simple one. So you've got the battery, the battery's sitting here. And then you wire the batteries up so that um, the plus goes into that point. And it seems like you have to connect a wire over to this switch, which is, um, Oh, damn, you've got some switches. One of them's missing, but that's cool. And then that connects over to uh, these little uh, pin boards, which seem to be like little breadboards. So they actually, uh, they make a connection. That's nice, that's cool. It's like a really light and 1980s, or maybe 1970s, we'll find a year in a second of that style breadboard. And then it simply connects up to, oh, there's an LED. So there will be an LED on here. I don't know whether they're actually still in there. No, it doesn't seem that there's an LED inside there, but the LED is probably added afterwards. Like, here's a broken LED on the side. It looks like it's been a little bit... Yeah, so it looks like it's been put together like a kit. Oh, here's an LED. Pop that one in here. Oh. Whee. Whee. Poke that in there. So we've got all of... Seems to be reasonably complete put there. That's so cool. And there's a spare, some spare breadboard parts, some wires for an antenna. You've got some screws, and then there's also a speaker that goes into the back of this. Uh, amazingly, that it's, Scott has uh, used this a lot, but it's uh, all been put back in its place and then shoved up in the loft for 30 years or so. But then, yeah, that's so cool. The world of radio and electronics. It's a really cool kit, and the year is, let's find the year. Let's find a year in here somewhere. There'll be a year here. There'll be a year. 1977 so yeah that's that's really cool i wonder what was sat here um 
There was a couple of things sitting about. Maybe there were spare speakers possibly. So yeah, this is currently the uh, educational kit set that I've been building up, like just trying to find lots of different ones. In fact, uh, on the second open day a couple of weeks ago, Giles Archer and Scarlett dropped off this 1975-ish Denshi board. This is rather interesting actually, because of the way it is set up. So if you look at this, it's the, um, it's the Denshi board and there's lots of funny little, uh, funky little characters bouncing around. But um, if you look at the front, this is do-it-yourself kit, Denchi board, SR2A. The cool thing about the Denchi board, and I hadn't realized this about the uh, history of it is, so if you can see, they're little components that are sat inside uh, plastic enclosures to actually make the circuit work. And this one's uh, all been packed again as a Morse code machine. But the great thing about the Denchi board, you may notice there's a lot of crossover between the Gacken EX150, and if you see in there, you'll see that all of the electronic components are pretty much laid out in a very similar fashion. Uh, you'll see that there's the um, there's the symbols on top of the plastic thing, and then that's what's inside. You'll see that there's uh, little wires as well. So this one's got wires in, and this one's got a resistor. Well, it's the same as here. However, the only difference here is only the electronic components are in there. The wires are these little uh, little junction points. And if you could see here, you could get different types of junction points. This one's just a single one. This one's a fork in the road kind of style. And it looks like there's been one that's been made to go diagonally as well. If you look here, you'll notice that Gacken, well, it says Denchi Gacken. So from as far as I understand, this is actually an early 70s uh, Denchi board and block. And then apparently Gacken uh, collaborated with Denchi Block uh, to uh, release uh, certain Denchi boards under the Gacken name. And this actually culminated into something around 1976, 1977. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what I have figured out put a, on a quick uh, internet search that the EX150 uh, came to light. So amazingly enough, this, even though it does look pretty pretty modern as far as modern is concerned like these are a 90 a late 1970s board so uh denchi gacken yeah there was a collaboration between denchi blocks and gacken so that's where the ex150 came from and it sort of originated from the the idea of the denchi board with denchi blocks how amazing is that? So with all of this in mind, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to, funnily enough, have to probably start making a bigger thing because I just keep on, we just keep on finding more and more different types of educational experiment to kits. There's numerous types of Philips boards. These are incredibly cool and just um, the way they look, especially throughout the time from the 1950s all the way over to the uh, mid 80s. And then you're looking at the 1990s style ones. And then there's the more spring block ones like this, uh, this science fair one, 75 and one. And there's another one down here. <laughs> but um, So I'll have to look at space. There's gonna be a table at some point in the near future right here where there can be more interactive things plugged in. So potentially a number of these things could potentially move somewhere else. So there's more space for uh, educational kits as uh, yeah, as, as, as we find them. So yeah, just an update on the different educational kits that have turned up. Thank you very much, Giles and Scarlett and also Scott and Sid. I've got to find somewhere to put it after I take some photos and stuff like this. But did you have this one? There is amazingly a Philips one that is of a oscilloscope. Uh, you get to build your own oscilloscope as a transparent one, but they are very hard to find right now. I'm trying to get on the hunt for one of those. So if you have a lead on something like that, then please, please let me know because we're trying to, just trying to get all of the different types and um, yeah. I hope you enjoyed that. The museum's open this weekend. The tickets are available below if you want to come. If you want to support these kind of videos and the museum and stuff, then go and check out over on Patreon because, you know, it helps, uh, yeah, it helps this thing kind of come to fruition and it's going to keep on, keep on going. We're going to keep on building on it. Anyway, I'm Sam. This museum's not obsolete and have a lovely time. Mm -hmm.